Find out how you can assist with bridging the gap between the Haitian and American communities. Up next on The Giblin Report. Welcome to the Giblin Report. I'm Assemblyman Tom Giblin, representing the 34th District, which includes Clifton, East Orange, Montclair, and Orange. On today's program, I am pleased to welcome two guests, Reverend John Maurice, pastor of the Haitian Pastors Association of New Jersey, and also pastor of the Temple of Unified Christians, Brick Church in East Orange. And also joining with us is Archangel Antoine, Vice President of the Roselle Board of Education and a leader in the Haitian American community. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Your Haitian background, were either of you born in Haiti? We'll start with uh, Reverend Maurice. Yes, I, I was born in Haiti. I migrated to this country in 1968. Uh, I went through the school systems here and um, uh, I had a passion to help people. Uh, in 1988, I started a community center in East Orange, and that became not only a small school, a hub to help people, but also it became a daycare, and also it, it evolved into the church, into the brick church where we are today. Uh, Archangel, uh, how about yourself? Are you, uh, your parents were born in Haiti, or were you born there yourself? Yeah, actually I was born here, right here in Elizabeth, New Jersey, uh, as, a as a child and moved to Roselle, but my mom and my dad were originally from Haiti. They migrated here, where they actually were um, immigrants from Haiti, um, and it came in the late 70s under Jimmy Carter. And an interesting thing about my family is um, they were um, un undocumented. They actually were left Haiti as a result of the conflicts that were happening there and came on boat. And so um, I was born here with three other, uh, two other siblings. Haiti's had a lot of natural disasters in recent years. Uh, have either of you, I'll start with uh, Reverend Maurice, have you been to Haiti? Uh, lately, and, and really, how is the recovery going? I know it's, it's, it's challenging, to put it mildly. Yes, I had a chance to visit Haiti in 2010, March of 2010, actually, and um, uh, the, the hunger is a big problem. Uh, a lot of people are still hungry, and um, the devastation was so humongous that uh, people were still suffering, as, as even as of today. So uh, the challenge is to continue to help Haiti, even though we do not have the spotlight uh, as the media projected before. Well, during the tenure, I guess, of uh, President Bill Clinton, he was a big advocate, and I guess he, even to this day, continues to advocate for, for Haiti. But one of the common issues seemed to be that sometimes the support wasn't kind of getting down to the, to the people. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but, you know, the infrastructure, for example, I mean, how is that doing? I mean, I, uh, in terms of, you know, really getting back on the road the way it should be. The infrastructure is very slow. Talk about building bridges, the roads, the communication, uh, the progress is very, very slow. But again, um, I've said with the senator from Haiti th this weekend, this, uh, and he said the number one problem in Haiti is hunger. Uh, the, the, uh, the storms that are continuing to hit Haiti uh, after the earthquake, uh, and, and coupled with the problem of forestation, uh, it, food is a big problem, so I encourage everyone it, to Is there support. some UN or some international relief organizations that are helping with that effort? Yes, um, mostly the religious organizations who have been on ground, they have increased their efforts uh, to uh, bring food to Haiti, and I think um, Support a Child is, is one of them, and uh, I think several organizations, relief organizations, are continuing the work to do the work in Haiti. You know, it seems to me like Haiti geographically is located for a tremendous potential as a resort area. Uh, you know, you have other countries close by to, you know, capitalize on this. And what do you think is preventing Haiti from really getting to that point? Uh, politically, po political problem, the bureaucracy, um, even you, getting things to custom. You had an election, what, about a year ago? Was yes, it? about a year ago, and uh, we have a new president, uh, President Martelli. And, and um, how long is that term for? Like uh, the term is for five years, yeah, and um, but meanwhile we have uh, uh, 
a lot of uh, dissension between Parliament and the President, uh, and the Prime Minister. There's a lot of things going on there. And the United Nations cannot release funds the way they, they want to, to to the government because of mistrust. And that's a problem as far as uh, the people getting the help that they need. Well, who's our key person there, would you say, from the United States? I mean, is the Secretary of State involved with this effort? Like, I guess, you know, Hillary Clinton was involved for a period of time, you know, during her, her watch. But, you know, who's really our eyes and ears on the ground there for the interests of our country? Well, I think uh, uh, President Bill Clinton and the ambassador are the key people who can uh, really uh, effectuate change in Haiti. Uh, the bureaucracy, the political barriers, uh, and, and other uh, politics have really crippled the, the, the country, and the help is not getting to the people in a timely fashion, and that's a big problem. Uh, Archange, uh, you're involved, you know, you know first generation here uh, in this country. I know you're trying to make an effort to try to uh, unify the Haitian community. I mean, first of all, tell us a little bit about the Haitian community, you know, where they mostly congregated. I mean, I know, for example, in Essex County, East Orange, Orange, the Balesburg section in Newark, uh, you know, but be, throughout the state, I know your, your interest is in Union County and Roselle. Yeah. Well, what, what, first of all, what are, you, what are you trying to accomplish? And then, you know, maybe answer the question as far as the Haitian community, are they mostly confined to northern New Jersey? Yeah. Well, I think it's exactly what you were talking about before. When you're looking at who 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 are some of our leaders, who do we hold accountable? I think when you look at that, that's the importance of making sure the Haitian community is organized, so that we can make sure that we're holding people who are supposed to do their their job and their assignments uh, accountable. But right now, when you look at the state of New Jersey, there are you know th um, three top major areas where you have a highly concentration of Haitians that's, uh, you're looking at Irvington, you're looking at the uh, Orange, and you're looking at Roselle. Um, you do have East Orange as well, and you have Asbury Park, um, but overall uh, in New Jersey, Essex County and Union County are very, the, the uh, highly Haitian American concentration. And so uh, what I've been really focusing on is bringing traditional folks like leaders like Pastor Maurice who've been working years on really trying to empower the community to educate but I think there's this younger generation that um, we really need to focus on the average um, uh, the average Haitian American um, age in, in, in America is at, at you're looking at 29 years old uh, based on the latest census information so I've been really just That's a young to, age but you know I mean it's definitely uh, yeah a, a, a very young age and um, I've been really just trying to make sure that we're able to grasp into some of this this talent and building some of these young professionals and these business owners and these entrepreneurs, but also letting them see this bigger p picture, which is in the importance of growing, but also making sure you're connected to uh, where your mom and your dad was from and being a part of that uh, process. And so that's what I've been able to do. And so uh, right now we're really trying to work on um, for the next say, year, for 2014, having one Haitian Flag Day all around the state of New Jersey. And so that's, um, that's a major success for us coming okay. together. Uh, Reverend Maurice, you've been involved for many years with the Haitian uh, Pastors Association. I know you, you had a recent meeting uh, in Orange, New Jersey. Uh, tell me what that was about. I know you had you know, some speakers and you brought a cross-section of the community together. But what's, what, are we, what are you trying to accomplish? Yes, uh, one of the problems, 50% uh, of the people, over 50% of the people in Haiti are illiterate. And when they come, migrate to this country, not only some of them are illiterate, but also they do not speak English. Um, one of the problems uh, that we have in the churches is that people come in and uh, they are not self-sufficient. We have to not only uh, take care of them spiritually, make sure that, that we're feeding them, but also socially and financially, that's a challenge for the churches. So we, 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 we came with this organization uh, to try to come, uh, NOAA. Uh, uh, this organization, NOAA, is, is really an organization which is national organization of, of Haitian for the advancement uh, of Haitians. Uh, they came together with the Haitian Pastors Association to try to see if we can identify some of the issues such as mental health problems uh, that are plaguing our community, and also to assist the pastors to uh, find resources mm. from the federal government, 
the local agencies uh, to assist in the churches. You know, it seems to me, though, as a rule, you know, the Haitian community has a pretty good work ethic. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think many of the people are on unemployment or assistance uh, program. So, you know, you're talking about the language barrier, but how do you get around that? I mean, you know, they, they seem to be finding jobs. Maybe they're not the best jobs, but a job is a job is a job. Yes, yeah, Assemblyman, simply, you're right on target. Um, the work ethic is very high, um, coupled with the fact, I think, Haitian community, uh, uh, of, we've been fueled by poverty. Actually, when we come here, we are very aggressive because we well, want to work. It's a step up. Yes, ab absolutely. And we will work. We'll, you know, any level job you find, someone from the Haitian community will do. Um, the bed rock industry is the cabs. The people will drive cabs and so forth and clean homes uh, so that they can put food on the table. Uh, the language barrier is a problem because uh, we need more resources uh, for um, the churches and community center. We don't have one community center, whether in Essex, whether in Union County. And we have a large Haitian population in both counties. That should not be so. Uh, and I feel that it, we really need, this is a big need in the, in the Haitian community, where we can come together, uh, galvanize the resources, organize the leadership, uh, as our Kenj mentioned. We have a lot of Haitian professionals. Um, you know, my, my, my kids are professionals. They all graduated from school. And we You're would like You're a resident of East Orange, correct? I'm a resident of East Orange. And, um, we would like to see all, all these uh, leadership come together with their resources to help the community, not only here, but also abroad. Archange, uh, I noticed you're vice president of the Roselle Board of Education. Is that an appointed position, or were you elected to that? Uh, I was actually elected in 2011 um, in the city of Roselle. And um, um, I've been in this position for a while, and I, as of this year, I became the vice president. When you look at Roselle, prime example, 8% of our population are Haitian. We have a growing Haitian population in our schools. And recently, we've been really uh, focusing um, and looking at our curriculum and making sure that things are up to standard to meet this growing population. Uh, we had a great program recently in the library for the first time where it was catered on teaching everyone. I think at the core of everything what we have to understand, part of bridging this gap is to understand that we're all Americans at the end of the day and where maybe our parents were from different places, but if we start to look at it from that, that picture, that, that prism, I think we can really start to bridge that gap. And so at this event in the library, we had people from all different cultures coming to the library learning about Haitian cultures, traditions, and a lot of parents were really pleased about that. And so um, that's what we really try to focus on um, in, my, in an initiative in Roselle. You mentioned about Flag Day. When, when is the Flag Day for the Haitian community? What month is that? The Haitian Flag Day is May 18th, and for uh, next year, it's going to be falling on a Sunday. And we're really why is that so important? You know, uh, having a special uh, event for you know, the Haitian Flag Day. Uh, I think it's the same thing when you're when you're celebrating any other Flag Day. When we, we're celebrating our Flag Day in America or you, different countries, it's a sense of where you came from, a sense of pride, who you are, adapting to the food that you eat. But more importantly, our flag represented an opportunity for people to for freedom, liberty. And when you look at the Haitian flag, it wasn't just about um, uh, breaking away from colonialism and having the independence and being one of the first free black countries, but it was also sending res residents around the country and letting people know that liberty and freedom should be for all. And so I think that flag day that we take personally, especially you know as a Haitian American, is just to say that liberty and freedom is so important to me. Have you figured out where you're going to have that? Uh Flag raising ceremony. You so said you were trying to have one spot next we, year. We've we've met with leaders all around the state of New Jersey, and and ninety nine point nine of the uh, leaders have agreed they want to have it. We're meeting next week, um, and to define where we want to have it at. But more than likely, we're going to be trying to have a system to rotate it. And what we're trying to say is, you can have your individual projects in your towns, but we would love to have, for that day to be that allocated to one event. We can bring people from Miami, people from New York, and. I think it also stimulated our economy when you're talking about bringing people from other states to support a, a statewide event. It's awesome. Reverend Maurice, I know one of the uh, interests you've had over the years is trying to get uh, folks from the Haitian community into elective uh, positions, uh, whether it be in the state or the region. 
Uh, how successful have you been on that? I know we all, you've had some success in Irvington and I think down in uh, Central Jersey. I, I believe there's a Haitian uh, mayor. Maybe you want to tell our viewers about that? Yes. Uh, we were very successful to have a, a Haitian mayor uh, down in, in South Jersey. And, but the thing that interests me also, uh, Mr. Assemblyman, is that over the years it took time for us to, to be where we are. A Haitian councilman in Irvington, a councilwoman in Irvington, Charnette Aurelien. Um, and, and I think it's very important to, to, to find out that. I it think took you have time. a Haitian member of the Board of Education in Irvington, too. We have a Haitian member in the Board of Education, okay? We have Joe Sylvan uh, down there. And, uh, and we have also uh, a Haitian member in, in, in East Orange, uh, in Elus, Finn Elus is another one uh, in East Orange. So I think we see progress over the years, but it, it, took, it took a lot of time. One of the key things that I try to do is to get our people to vote. And also as politicians come and, and solicit vote in our communities, we want to hold them accountable so that when they do win, we, we can you know, share the needs of the community so that they can give back to the community. Uh, Archangel, you said about your parents, yourself, is there any gap between, you know, parents and, and children in the Haitian community in terms of trying to, you know, capture the American dream? I mean, you know, in terms of, you know, it sounds to me like, you know, you were well educated, your family understand the value of education. Where did you go to school? Uh, I attended the, the Rowan University in South Jersey and I did my master's at Seton Hall University. And um, I think my parents didn't have the luxury of going to college, but one thing they emphasized was education was the key to success. And um, there was some, I remember being there late night trying to understand uh, FAFSA, and uh, my mom was like, just get it done. Whatever you need to be assigned, get it done. Education is important. So I think that there potentially is a gap between understanding um, uh, of the educational experience, but I think when, when you look at every Haitian community around the state of New Jersey, education will resonate no matter what. It's get the education, make sure you're doing well, and the, raise the name of the family, and that's the big thing about our, our culture, is making sure that you're able to walk out and represent the entire community in, in, in a positive light. Uh, Reverend Maurice, uh, I think years ago you served as one of the police commissioners uh, in the city of East Orange. Yes. Uh, and, you know, there used to be a divide. I, I think it's probably been minimized, but among the African-American community and the Haitian community, I guess it was, I guess it was a cultural uh, issue. Uh, I know that's been helped by uh, policemen who've been hired that have a Haitian background, but was that really there some years ago in your early days? No, it, it was there. And, and I'm glad that uh, Mayor Cardell Cooper appointed me uh, to serve as a police commissioner. How many years the, did you serve on there? Uh, I served for about eight, uh, six years, six years on the police board. And um, when I came on board, I felt strange. But because I was a police commissioner, um, I cannot really tell you how many people came, reached out to me to try to assist in so many different issues. Mm. And I think this is the, what we want to see. We want to see a replicate of, of appointment on different boards in the community, especially in the um, population, in the heavy uh, populated area of oranges. You want uh, the representation Elizabeth. to kind of reflect the population? Absolutely. This is so key. And also, I think that will bridge a lot of the gap uh, that exists, you know, between the, the rich and the poor, the young and the old, uh, the gap between uh, the digital divide, which is also another problem, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, technology and businesses. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, communication gap and uh, even in mass media we have a communication gap because of the communication uh, the language barrier but people like Archange and myself and other community leaders if we come together as a body we can bridge a lot of the gaps that exist in our community. Are you doing language courses I mean to help yes. uh, the community as far as you know uh, having English as a second language? Yes, uh, it's a small scale. Well, your, your, your constituency would be speaking what, French Creole? French Creole, yes, French Creole. Um, as I said, I started back in 1988. We started uh, by giving free ESL classes, uh, even teaching literacy, and that became so big. It, it, we got funded by uh, the Board of Education to even have a daycare mm -hmm. under um, Cordell Cooper and Dr. Uh, Howard, who was the superintendent. We were 
were um, funded uh, up to a quarter of a million dollars because we were able to service kids and, and, and also service uh, uh, people in the community. Uh, but now those things have dried up. We would like to see uh, uh, that come back again in the communities. Archangel, you know, it seems to me, you know, you're kind of an emerging uh, young professional, you know, in the Haitian uh, community. Are people who've become successful, you know, they have a tendency to kind of move away from the, the neighborhood uh, and move out to the burbs. Is that the case that you're finding? Because uh, uh, sometimes younger people need role models and they need to see people who are successful and I, nothing wrong with people mm -hmm. uh, moving up and moving out, but sometimes uh, we've seen it with other groups that works to the detriment of the community. They need people who are uh, have mo moved up the American mm -hmm. uh, ladder of success and they can compare them and you know, emulate them uh, in terms of their future. What do you, what do you find uh, as far as you know, the, the people you're associated with? You're, you're trying to organize yeah. a lot of the young Haitian professionals in terms of business mm. opportunities or political opportunities or leadership uh, in the state, correct? Yeah. Oh, uh, you bring up an excellent point. I think everybody would love that opportunity to say, I've done well, it's time to buy the home, get the grass, get the, have the, uh, um, all, all these things that come with the American dream. But at the same time, I think there's another way to look at it, which is saying, this is my home too. This is where I've been raised. And I would love to see these things in this community. And so I think that there's two sort of philosophies that come into place, which is saying, you know, do I move to somewhere where it's already shaped or do I help shape and create my own community? And that's the, what I've been stressing. I don't necessarily advocate anyone either moving or staying, but what I do emphasize is no matter where you go, you have to be a part of your community. And it's not just at home only, but making sure that you're part of the political process, you're part of the, making sure that you're interacting with the business community, and you're understanding how overall, how America works. And so back to the point, I think I've been stressing to a lot of the young um, brothers and a lot of the young um, sisters that they need to make sure that they understand their representatives and also making sure that they're holding them accountable. Because again, at the end of the day, we're accountable to making sure we get to the polls and hitting the button who we want. And I think that our vote should also represent, um, have a reflection of the things that we want in the community, especially when you're talking about having a high percentage of your community um, represented. Uh, Reverend Maurice, you, you're, are you the president of the Haitian Pastors Association? Yes. And I know uh, when you have your meetings, there's, there's a fair amount of Haitian pastors. I and mean, what would be on your invite list uh, in, the, you know, in the northern New Jersey area? Yes. How many, how many pastors would, would you say there are in the community? We would say the, the, the churches all together is about 50. Um, we have about half of them are very active in the Haitian Pastors Association, which is about 25 churches. But when we have a big gathering or events, we have about 50 churches that come together. And I think that's very important, it's key. It also helps to bridge the gap. We share a lot of uh, common concerns. One of the common concerns that the, the, the pastors are sharing is that there has been an exodus of professionals. Mm. Exiting Just the, the point I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. exiting the churches. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big problem because we need the resources. And uh, part of it is the language. Um, sometimes has there been much intermarriage uh, between you know Haitian community and other? Yes, yes. I would say a good thirty percent. That that uh, high? Yes, uh, it went uh, it went from you know ten percent to almost thirty percent over the years. Does that uh, kind of hurt a church like yours in East Orange, where oh. the people might move to another location? Well, it, it did hurt the church. So what I've done right now, I started a, a service in English, eight o'clock service, English only. And this is a way to try to uh, make it uh, comfortable for those who speak English, uh, those of Haitian American descent, to feel part of this uh, worship service. To you work, uh, you have a regular job during the day working for the County of Essex, right? Yes, I work full time as a social worker. And uh, in the afternoon, I'm a full time pastor. It seems <laughs> to me like you work, then you work seven days a week because uh, your major work is, of course, uh, on the weekends. Uh, you know, Saturday or Sunday, yes. and Archangel, uh, you work for uh, an organization called Building One New Jersey, correct? Yes, I, yes, I work I know for it's them. not a political organization, but it's about, you know, trying to look at some of our older cities and about efforts towards revitalization and, and trying to, uh, you know, make them strong, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, I work with Building One New Jersey, we're an organization that focuses 
on um, towns that are racially and economically diverse. I'm one of the regional organizers with them. And all again, back to the, the point, making sure that families, middle class families, and poor families have an opportunity to the American dream. Looking at public policy, how that affect communities, not just short term, but long term. You talk about 20, 50 years down the line. And again, we work with all different state legislators and local um, officials and community leaders around brainstorming and more importantly, looking at the future of the younger generation, how it affects them. Well, I think the viewers of the Giblin Report uh, have learned a lot uh, about the Haitian community, uh, an emerging force uh, in New Jersey in all kinds of ways. And I want to thank uh, Reverend Jean Maurice. Uh, I've known Reverend Maurice for uh, many years, and I watched the work that he accomplishes uh, with the Haitian Pastors Association and Thank also you. with uh, Temple Unified Christian Church uh, in East Orange. Uh, he's keeping the flag flying, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, at the Brick Church uh, area and uh, is involved in all facets of community. And of course, uh, Archangel uh, Antoine, uh, with the positive work you're doing with Building One uh, New Jersey and also trying to develop uh, young professionals within the Haitian community. I think it's all good uh, news and something that's going to, you know, see uh, positive results. And uh, I know as far as any activities that you're involved with, that uh, certainly we'll try to broadcast them or, or let people know uh, how they are about, you know, trying to make sure that the her, her Haitian community has its uh, seat at the table in terms of the issues that impact uh, all New Jerseyans and Thanks for your efforts and thanks for your strong leadership. Thank, Thank you. you. And I just want to remind uh, the viewers of the Giblin Report uh, that if you have any uh, current issues uh, that require my attention uh, or any uh, questions regarding uh, state legislation, uh, you can reach out to me by phoning 973-779-3125 or else you can email me at asmgiblin at njleg.org. Uh, for additional information, you can also go to my website, www.assemblymangiblin.com. Thanks for watching the Giblin Report. And remember, if it's an issue to you, it's an issue to me.